This is the story of Miss Susie by Miriam Young and pictures by Arnold Lobel. And this is read by your Nana. This book, JT and Jaron, and Andrew and Elena, was one of Uncle Jay's books, or your daddy's books, guys. Here we go. Miss Susie. Miss Susie was a little gray squirrel who lived all by herself in the tip, tip top of a tall oak tree. She liked to cook, she liked to clean, and she liked to sing while she worked. Every morning, Miss Susie made herself a bowl of acorn pudding, and as she stirred it around, she sang, Oh, I love to cook, I love to bake, I guess I'll make an acorn cake. And after that, she swept all the crumbs from her moss carpet with a little broom she'd made from maple twigs. Then she dusted her firefly lamps and rinsed her acorn cups and put her whole house in order. At night, Miss Susie climbed into her bed and looked through the topmost branches at the sky. She saw a million stars and the wind blew gently rocked her to sleep. It was very peaceful. One day, a band of red squirrels came jumping and chattering to the foot of the tree where Miss Susie lived. They were quarrelsome fellows and liked fighting so much they even fought among themselves. Miss Susie did not see them because she was in her kitchen, and she did not hear them because she was singing, I love my house, so oh yes siree, my own little house in my own oak tree. She was just putting her cake in the oven when she looked up and saw a lot of strangers in her doorway. One, two, three, she counted, and one, two, three more, six red squirrels. chased her out of her little house. They broke her broom and threw out her acorn cups and then they ate up her whole winter supply of nuts. Poor Miss Susie. She didn't know where to go. And while she stood wondering what to do, it began to rain. She scampered up the nearest tree. It was a maple standing beside an old, old house. She ran out on a branch and dropped to the roof. The rain came down hard and her fur was all wet. Shivering and cold, Miss Susie scrambled down the chimney of the old, old house and out of a hole into the chimney into the attic. There in the dusty attic, she saw a beautiful dollhouse. It was big enough for a whole family of dolls. She knocked at the door. There was no answer. So she peeped inside. <gasps> My, what a lovely house, thought Miss Susie. It's fit for a queen, but it needs a good housekeeper, so it's just the place for me. The flowered carpets were covered with dust, and cobwebs clung to the gold chandeliers. There was dust on the black iron stove in the kitchen and on the little piano in the parlor. There was even dust on the china closet in the dining room and a spider web on the dishes inside. When it's cleaned, it will be a good house for the winter, said Miss Susie to herself. But what a shame there's no one there to share it with me. It is so big. She cleaned the whole first floor. And then she went upstairs and cleaned the bedrooms. And then she climbed into a four-poster bed and fell asleep. Ooh. The next morning, Miss Susie was hungry. She left the dollhouse to go looking for nuts or seeds. And on her way to the attic window, Miss Susie saw a box. Just that thing to keep my nuts and seeds in, she thought, and opened it up. Well, what do you think she saw inside? A band of toy soldiers. 
They had been sleeping there for years. Thank you for setting us free, said the captain. And now I need a place for us to live. Do come stay with me, invited Miss Susie. So the toy soldiers marched to the big dollhouse, and Miss Susie took care of them like a mother. She cooked them meals in the little kitchen and served them in the dining room. And at night, she told them stories and tucked them into the four-poster beds. The soldiers were very happy, and most of the time, Miss Susie was happy too, but not always. Sometimes she looked at the flowered carpets and the real china dishes and the gold chandelier and she sighed, thinking of her plain moss carpet and her firefly lamps and her acorn cups. So one night in spring, instead of telling the soldiers a story, she told them about her old home in the oak tree. And then she told them how the red squirrels had come and chased her away and a tear rolled down her furry cheek. Late that night, the captain woke his men and gave them their orders. There were only five of them, but they were very brave, and their hearts were full of love. After all, Miss Susie had cared for them all winter. Ooh. They marched up to the oak tree and scaled its trunk. The red squirrels were, as usual, fighting amongst themselves and they were making so much noise that they did not hear the soldiers until it was too late. <clears throat> this is Miss Susie's house, said the captain, drawing his sword. Will you go peaceably, or must we fight? The red squirrels looked at the soldiers with their shining swords and their brave faces, and one by one, they scurried down the trees, head first. And don't come back, shouted the captain. Miss Susie was overjoyed when she heard she could move back into the tall oak tree. She thanked the toy soldiers and made them promise to come for dinner once every week. And then the soldiers waved goodbye and marched off through the forest, singing merrily. Susie had to work hard to make her old house as cozy as it had been before, but she didn't mind. She made a new moss carpet and a broom and gathered fresh cups, acorns for cups, and caught two fireflies for her lamps. And at last she had everything in order. And that night, when she went to bed, she was very tired. But she looked through the branches, and she could see a million stars. The wind blew gently and rock the tree like a cradle. It was very peaceful, and Miss Susie was very, very happy once more. The end.